Hi, this is Craig Lane with Health Alchemy. Week four, PowerPoint, which is the starting of week three of the cleanse of the small intestine. And here we see in slide number one, we're looking at the home stretch. And the analogy of my life is walking the edge. How can you know what the edge is until you push the limits? And it's been a theme throughout my life as a surfer. You never know. There's a saying in surfing, no guts, no glory. If you haven't got the guts to go on the scary wave, then you're not going to get the glory of riding the wave. And the same could be said for hunting, you know, wild boar. And, you know, I think that men used to hunt. And, you know, some women too, I'm sure. But hunting is that same kind of thing, you know. If you don't have the guts to go for it, you may not have the glory of the kill. And in athletics, it's a bit of the same thing. Anytime we take on a, a new sport, you know, they take risks. And so in the cleansing part, this last seven days, we just came through the uh, the hardest week, which is week number two, typically, when you're clearing out the critters. And because we are mostly microorganisms, you know, they, they're invested in being there. And so in terms of consciousness, you know, we're sort of looking at walk on this edge a bit. And I, I love this analogy of, you know, stepping over the edge. We're going to happen that's when we make mistakes and fall and um fortunately when working with things like natural foods and therapies when we fall over the edge we typically don't die and that's where we're really blowing it um slide number two you know it's just part of like enjoy yourself you know at least as much fun as my teacher used to say as while you're being dragged into the abyss during you know day four or five of a five-day silent retreat you know, and I think that um, it's a bit of a nice comic there. You know, disembodied head in a jar is very apropos for how we can feel when we're doing this sort of thing. Um, feeling a bit disembodied, feeling a bit like these cravings are out of control, feeling a bit like, you know, like I love the projections like, you know, screw this guy. I'm going to go do what I want have chocolate or have um, some sugar or you know, coffee. And I almost had my coffee this morning. And, Thank God I didn't. It just feels good to not go there. Um, so the word enjoy, you know, one of the root words is um, enjoy, not just the word enjoy, but think about it. You're enjoy. And we can find joy in funny little things as long as we are curious. And that's a good word there. It's just finding some curiosity of what it is we're doing in, in our process. Um, slide three is, you know, our mind's going to tell us things. Our body needs things. Our heart feels things, and then there's something that my teacher talks about where, you know, there's something that if you really start to look, you'll see that there is something that where you can't trust your mind, you can't trust your body's needs because sometimes they're just pathogenic like Taco Bell, or you can't trust even what your heart's feeling because there's a point, and it's called the dark night of the soul is what St. John called it. And so there's something that's prior to all this and something more immediate, as my teacher once put it. And my direct experience validates that. You know, I'm the kind of person I won't take anybody's word for anything. I'm going to go find out for myself. And that's the very thing that my teacher taught was to investigate what I'm pointing at. And I'm pointing at something here. Who is the one that says I'm in pain? Who's the one that says I'm craving? Who is the one who is the one perceiving um the craving you know so it, there's a lot of exploration here and the reason why i bring this up is because when we get clear down below this tends to get a little clearer up here and then our heart tends to feel a bit more so on the slide four there is a method to my madness i've had a number of people during the in-person cleanse group complain about the lack of clarity and yet when i examine what it is that i've actually presented it it has been very clear and so I realize that some people just want to be told what to do and you're kind of in the wrong place if that's what you want with me because I'm not, I don't work the way where I never wanted to be told what to do. And so I'm not going to tell others what to do. I'm going to say, here's your broad fence and here is your um, suggestions and here is what I would think might be good for you. But ultimately, this is each of our own exploration. And... And even so, we still have people that, you know, they want to they want to be right and they don't want to really sit in that vulnerability of like, you know, I was wrong and I made a mistake and maybe I 
didn't listen to the instructions or maybe I didn't um, maybe I didn't um, hear you and just admitting mistake you know I confess to the group today as a matter of fact that um, I'm not perfect and nor do I expect to be perfect but my shadow wants to be perfect and my shadow wants to please everybody so this is what I want for you is to find the discernment for yourself and not take on other people's projections like mine or nor um, you project onto others because when we work with our own autonomy we tend to gain more confidence and empowerment and this cleanse is part of that how deep can you go I challenge each of you how deep can you go how much can you stretch yourself and then you find out where your edge is week five <laughs> excuse me slide five draw some fun with this huh um, this is a quote from the essential oils book I'm reading right now it's quite fascinating that the second law of thermodynamics you know states the natural processes in a closed system will tend towards greater degrees of disorder but yet living things like plants take inorganic minerals out of the soil and air out of the air you know elements out of the air and make them into sugar make them into green pigments and make them into flowers and so they take the disorganized and give it form and function so the second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to animate uh, animate objects like living things if our bodies were purely mechanical then they would have fallen apart long ago so think about what your car would be like if it was a living being the paint would regenerate every every few weeks that's something profound you have to think about the oil would be purified the gasoline tank would be filled up all by itself the tires would be rotated and renewed as needed the uh, bumpers and fenders would be repaired but cars are inanimate objects for the most part and they do tend towards greater degrees of disorder right think about you buy a car and within sometimes one year for some people the 20 years for others it is an integrated disorder you know it is rusted and the wheels need aligning and the tires are bald and if you don't put gas in the tank it's not going to work so ponder that you know it's I judge it's worthy of pondering that we have chemical lookalikes go to slide six so the big lie are the chemical nutrients that are out there raw honey I don't care what any chemists have it all wrong chemists are looking at life through a very myopic perspective in general raw honey is not the same as sugar and raw honey is alive and it has various other things in it besides just carbon hydrogen and oxygen which is just what's in refined sugar raw fresh food is not the same as refined food go see for yourself as the guy on Super Size Me did one of my favorite movies you know he went out there and ate a McDonald's diet strictly for 30 days and he was ready to crash and you know as his doctor said he was very worried about him microbes microbial transformation transmutations much different than chemical um, one of the big ones that I preach about is B vitamins from or nutrients and vitamins in general they're not chemicals they're living part of living processes so when you buy laboratory made nutrients which get over it people nine out of ten of them out there are maybe 99 out of 100 of them are I don't know how many people have come to me and they're shocked to believe that to find out <laughs> that their supplement is nothing more than chemical lookalikes so you better start asking is my pill 100% food and sure that you might you might add a few like to standardize things of certain elements and that's great so the big lie is believe what we tell you and don't ask questions but living compounds do organize life in a greater degrees of complexity and that's where the center of attention especially in that little diagram there you know life is actually in the orange to the bottom right but I put life right in the center which they have is I believe is um, in the center is might and I think that that's a mistake I put life in the center because the choosers at the center of all things and so the big lie is that um, chemicals and living processes are the same 
we are not a mechanical process as living beings, nor are any. Uh, slide seven. So we're moving on to the theme more practically into the cleanse now of we have these things to look at in a healthy gut. So we have the microbes that occupy our gut and our skin and our nose and our eyeballs and, and in our teeth and in our bladder and in our, you know, then there's the tissue they occupy, which I just mentioned. Then there's a the mucus layer. So, you know, there's mucus here and there's mucus up here. And there's mucus around here. And you could view it as, you know, sort of like you need to have lubrication for things to move. So there's not a lot of friction. If you didn't have any lubrication in your intestines, nothing would move. So we need to be able to make mucus, and we call that yin in Chinese medicine. The ability of the tissue to make mucus. So that's pretty important. If the tissue can't make mucus, then what's going on? You know, why? The building materials provided are your food and nutrients. Is it real, natural? The blueprint is, you know, I have a blueprint that says make my face like this, this lip like this, this nose like this. And there's been various names of this. I have two named here. Ormus is one name for the blueprints that make up the body. Um, this is not DNA particularly, because I believe DNA is nothing more than the, the hard drive code of what, you know, how to make stuff, but it doesn't necessarily the process itself. So Royal Lee, the founder of Standard Process, termed this protomorphogen, which proto meaning protein, morphogen meaning morphogenic field or the blueprint, the blueprint upon which proteins are laid. And I like that word. It really works for me. Uh, there was a guy who called it Ormus. I don't remember his name, unfortunately. And then many other men had different names for these, for this process, this blueprint. And then the waste produced by what is upstream, which could be viewed as thoughts can be wasteful or helpful how much we chew so this is all upstream down in the lower bowels you know it's downstream so we have all these things to look at for a healthy gut is our gut blueprint healthy are you providing good building materials waste can be in terms of like we have wasteful choices like eating foods that part of the big lie of the foods of commerce you know we eat foods that produce a lot of waste in our body like eating taco bell is going to generate 100 units of waste and maybe give you one unit of actual nutrients. I know that's hard to stomach, but that's the reality of the situation, whether you like it or not. So we're trying to help people get to a place where they make less waste and more actual nutrient dense tissue. Um, we also have to look at, so these are all the things to look at in a healthy gut. We also have to look at, um, how all these things interact is pretty important. Slide eight. So our food themes for week three is if you haven't finished your remaining herbs and supplements from week two, continue them. Do not throw them out. And if you need help, then you know you don't want to take your probiotic with your antimicrobial herbs necessarily, although it's not going to be that much of a end of the a deal breaker, so to speak, but It'd be more helpful to not do them together. Um, continue with the easy to digest foods as much as possible. We're not going for necessarily a strict liquid diet this week, but that might be helpful for you as long as you have liquid diet and eating light. So if you have a chance to take a few days off, I know that I'm going to be taking Tuesday and Wednesday off and just chill out and maybe do a little yoga and sleep sleep a lot with my girlfriend. And And then there's some example of Eat as much pre and probiotic foods, which we're going to go into now. Um, some of your probiotic foods to incorporate better flora are listed below. If you have any questions, ask me. Yes, raw local honey is allowed. We've talked about that. That is on the, the uh, page of, of allowable foods. So, you know, enjoy up to a tablespoon of honey a day. I wouldn't suggest much more than that. But if you want to have some bee pollen and some honey, that's a good treat with some cinnamon. And there's all kinds of great stuff there. Um, that one could try. Some of those aren't allowed on the cleanse, but that's just some ideas of um, things that you could try out um, once the cleanse is over. But and you have your food sheet. This is just a master sheet of things that you could try once you're off the cleanse. And um, please enjoy yourself, you know. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing on the side here, I'm just brewing up some tea. 
because I'm doing this in the evening and it's getting a bit late for me. And it's nice to be able to enjoy a cup of tea while, we, while I chat with you. Um, we'll go to slide nine in part two. So this is the end of part one. Um, small intestine week four, or as we could put it, the uh, beginning of week three of the cleanse. We'll talk to you guys soon in part two.